What's up YouTube? You might have seen the news that Affinity 1.10 is out now and you might have been a little underwhelmed by it. Today we're going to talk about how Affinity 1.10 is not exciting and why that is actually okay. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen, I'm a media design educator, and today we're here to talk about Affinity 1.10. So normally when Affinity releases a new update, it's a big deal. There's a ton of stuff happening, there are new features coming out, and it's really an exciting time for us as Affinity users. It's especially exciting because we normally think of these updates as the time when Affinity is catching up to Adobe, adding new features that make them more like the Adobe programs or even surpassing the Adobe programs. But let me just read you a little bit from Affinity Publisher's 1.10 release notes. So we have here, the first thing that you'll probably notice is that the heading is fixes and improvements. There is no heading for new features, new tools, anything like that. No new studios, just fixes and improvements. And we've got things like improved performance with heavily layered documents, editing speed with long stories, placed images, embedded documents, low memory conditions, placed PDF set to pass through, documents containing placed documents, resource manager, smaller PDF, export file sizes, the list goes on, but none of it is very exciting. And that's the case when you look through the release notes for both Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer as well. I think it's really common when something like this comes out to be underwhelmed and disappointed. A lot of people, including myself, were expecting not 1.10, but 2.0 to come out with a lot of new features, and that just hasn't happened. Now, that could be due to the pandemic or a whole host of other things that might be going on with Serif and the way their development team is working. But I think it's really important to look at 1.10 and see what it really is and why it's probably some of the best news that we've had out of Affinity. 1.10 focuses really in on performance. And if you watch the video from Affinity's leader, Ashley Houston, where he goes into that huge document, hundreds of thousands of layers, and he's just able to drill down, down, down in real time with perfect smoothness, then you've really seen what the power of Affinity 1.10 is. And I'm not going to do any demos today because that's not something I can show you. I don't deal with files at that kind of scale. And it's hard to notice performance improvements, especially when I have just upgraded to that M1 iMac, and so I'm already seeing huge performance improvements in every app. From from what I used to see. So it's really hard to judge this, right? But why I think this is so important and such good news for us as Affinity users is that Affinity is willing to take the time to focus in on improvement and make something much, much better for us. And that's something that Adobe has been significantly lacking in. We all know that Adobe has resisted doing a complete rewrite of many of their apps. And so their apps still run on old legacy code. And Affinity was willing to dive in, really, we're only you know five, six years into this Affinity thing, and they were willing to already dive in and rework the code from the ground up to increase performance. And I think that that's super important as a telltale sign for the way they're going to treat their users in the future. They're going to continue to make improvements to these apps rather than just letting the legacy code build up and perform and slowly degrade over time and the need for faster and faster hardware to try and keep those apps running at the speed that they used to run at, which is what Adobe has really done for quite a while. I really like to see Affinity focused in on like, let's make sure that the performance is really good, that the apps aren't just cool, but that they actually work and that they work under a variety of conditions. I'm not working on huge, huge documents like Ashley was showing in the demo, but somebody out there is, and that's important for them. Those performance improvements will still benefit me in the work that I'm doing, even if I don't notice them. I'm not doing any demos of any of the Affinity apps on 1.10 today, because I don't think that that would be useful for you. I don't think you're going to see anything in that because I don't have those types of documents. If you have those types of documents and you want to make a video about that, that's something I would love to see, other people using huge documents and seeing what kind of performance they're able to get out of it. But I am very very excited about these updates just for what they show Affinity is willing to do. Now, of course, I'm still hopeful that when 2.0 comes out, we'll see a bunch of new types of features and tools that will be able to make our workflow even better. I'm hoping that Publisher especially will get a lot of updates that will be great for those of you working in the printing and publishing industry. Things like EPUB support, maybe even importing INDD files would be really nice. Things like footnotes and endnotes. And of course, we've all been waiting for right to left text for a long time. So I still hope those things are coming, but I don't think that we should be feeling super negative about this update because this update really is, in the long run, 
going to be more beneficial to us than maybe just getting something like a brand new tool. So go ahead, drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this. Have you upgraded to 1.10 and are you seeing any significant performance improvements either on your desktop or on your iPad or on your laptop? Let me know what you're using and what kinds of things you're seeing. And also, of course, what kinds of things you hope to see from Affinity in the future? Because even though I think the Affinity apps are still great as they are right now, of course, I want to see them continue to push this envelope further and further. So go ahead and drop in the comments and let me know what you're thinking. A little bit shorter video this week, not a tutorial because we just had a new baby and I don't have a lot of time to be putting into these videos right now, but hopefully I'll be able to get back on track as we head into the fall here. As always, if you're brand new to Affinity and you're trying to learn these programs, go ahead and check the description for my courses on these programs because that will really help you get up to speed in learning how to use them. Thanks so much for watching. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.